we have what the world does not have. We have what no man can give. We have what only God can give. We have the life recommended by God himself. This is the sweetest life of all. Congratulations and happy day to every one of you, the day two of seven. This annual convention 2024, Powerhouse Ministries. This is the year of its fullness. I want to congratulate every one of you today for making it to yet another day. Yesterday, we thank God for all that he has done, and I'm trusting God for amazing testimonies. Today, we even be more. Thank you, Jesus. And this day, we are coming to examine again our text, John chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. I like to read. John testified about him crying out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has priority over me, for he was before me. He takes ranks above me, for he existed before me. He was, he has advanced, he advanced before me because he is the chief. For out of his fullness, out of his abundance, we have all received, all had shared, and we were all supplied with one grace after another spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessings and even favor upon favor and gift heaped on gift hallelujah this is the amplified commentary rendition and this helps us to really see and capture the mind of the writer saying to ross john crying out testifying about the lord and savior jesus christ who came just after him. He said he was of a higher rank than him, himself and of his and from his abundance, from his fullness, we have all received and grace for grace, blessings heaped on blessings, gift heaped on gifts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this abundance that we just came into the fullness of his life. And today, we find out those things that we have received from him. We want to try to carefully look out for those things that we have been freely given. Hallelujah. The number one and on the very top of the list today that we are discussing is eternal life. The new life that we receive in Christ Jesus. The life that we once had was natural life. The life that we once had before meeting with Jesus is a normal life. It's described as an ordinary life. But now that we are in Christ, our life right now is a supernatural life. Eternal life of God is what we have received. It's a new life, a brand new life such as has never existed before. The life of God restored to our dead life. Hallelujah. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus told Thomas, he says, Jesus said to him, I am the only way. I am the real truth and I am the real life. He said, no one comes to the Father but through me. I am the only way. There are no other ways to get to the Father. There are no two ways to God to get to God. The creator of the ends of the earth. There is only one way. Jesus told Thomas, I am the only way. I am the real truth. And I am the real life. The real life is the new life that we receive from Christ is the eternal life that comes from God, from above. The life of God is the real life. Every other kind of life, natural, it is ordinary. It's a mere life. 
and the greatest gift that we receive of Christ, of his abundance, is the life that is to the full, to an overflow, is the real and the true life of God in man. Hallelujah. Looking at this, we want to explain this in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 9. He made us alive. We were once dead men walking, but now he made us alive. He brought us from the region of the dead. He gave us life, the life of God. We now live an eternal life here on earth. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 9, the old life that we've got, there is a dead man walking. Any man or woman who is not in Christ, they exist. They are not yet living. The real life, the new life, the true life, the original life, the real life of God is not in them. So they may claim to be alive, but they are just dead men and women walking. It's an old life. It's a life without meaning. It's a life with corruption. But when a man is in Christ, he has just received the life of God, the true life that comes from the Father. And now the scripture reads from verse 1, And you had he quickened who were dead in your trespasses and sin, wherein in time past you walked according to the curse of this world, according to the prince of the powers of the earth, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we have had our conversations in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of our mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together with Christ. He, by grace, ye were saved and had raised us up together and made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. For by grace ye were saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Hallelujah. This is what God did when we received the new life. He quickened us. He quickened our dead life and transformed us into a new life. He gave us the life that is eternal, the life that is not temporal, the life that is forever, the life that is enduring through all ages, the life without an end, an everlasting life of God. That is what we have received. And that changes the game completely. Now we know that there is no end to the life that we have received. Now we know we have exact same quality of life that the Father has. We now know that our end, this world, does not end us. We now know we live in eternity even beginning from here. Oh, glory to God. So this is beautiful. This is worthy of celebration. This is the greatest gift of all time for a believer. This is amazing. This is something that should generate joy. This is something that should give us satisfaction all the days of our lives. We have what the world does not have. We have what no man can give. We have what only God can give. We have the life recommended by God himself. This is the sweetest life of all. This is the life that transcends the natural earth. This is the beauty of our salvation. And that is what we receive from his fullness, from the fullness of Christ. We have received eternal life, eternal life, eternal life, awesome life, the life of God, the life of the Spirit, 
Oh, thank you, Jesus. We have been quickened. We have been made alive. We were dead men walking, but now we have been made alive in Christ Jesus. We are no longer dead men. We are living souls. We are now men who live by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now looking at this, when we check Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, the mission statement, Jesus came to the world with a mission, and that mission was declared by the mouth of the angel as he visited Mary. And we read from verse 21, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. This is his mission. And nothing can stop him from saving his people from their sins. Jesus' mission on earth is to give us abundant life, saving us from sin and giving us life again. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The glorious God sent his one and only begotten son, Jesus the Christ. He said his name would be Jesus and he shall save his people from all their sins. And that exactly is the number one thing that we receive from him, salvation eternal salvation, eternal life that has been given to us of his fullness. This is what we need to know. That's the beginning point. And glory, hallelujah, to the worthy Lamb of God. In John chapter 17, beginning from verses 1 down to 3, John 17, verses 1 down to 3, we realize that we have been given eternal life free of charge. It was given free of charge, completely given, totally given, without any cost. We did not pay anything to receive this eternal life. We do not merit or qualify for it. It was given free of charge. Hallelujah. Reading from verse 1, John chapter 17, the word reads, is that this word spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify the Son, that the Son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So he came with a mission to save his people from all their sins. So he thanked the Father because he has given all things under the control of the Son, that the Son should be able to give eternal life to as many as the Father has given him. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, for that eternal life. And this is eternal life. Now, understanding. Say, now, this is eternal life, that they might know thee, O oh God, as the true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. This is eternal life. Knowing God, knowing Jesus Christ as the only way, the only way to God. Understanding that Jesus Christ is the only truth, the real truth about God. Understanding that there are no two ways to God, but Jesus is the only way. This is eternal life. This is eternal life. Oh, glory to God. Talking about eternal life, what would you say? What is eternal life to us? Eternal life is everlasting life. The life to the full, to an overflow. The life that is endless. The life that is timeless, is a timeless life, is an endless life, is a life to the flu, to the full and to an overflow, is an everlasting life that is given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. He took from us 
the ordinary life, the limited life, the worthless life, the filthy life, the corrupt life, the miserable life, and the temporal life that we were living. He took it away from us and he replaced with a life that is timeless. He replaced with a life that is never ending. He replaced with a life without corruption. He replaced with a life without filth. He replaced with a life without any limitation. He gave us the best life ever, a new life in him. So we have received abundant life in the Lord Jesus Christ. By placing our faith in Jesus, we have eternal life of God. Oh, glory. This is the greatest miracle of all time. And then I would like to just look at, I took a research to find out exactly what is life. What is life to us? What will life mean naturally? What is life? And I realized life is time or period between a birth and death. That period in between the beginning, which is the birth of a child, and the death of that child, in between that two comes time. And that could describe what life is. Hallelujah. So naturally, ordinarily, in a common way, life is temporal. But when we talk about the one that God gives, the life of God, the real eternal life of God, it has no beginning, it has no end. It is God's own kind of life. It hails from the Father himself. And we came in to receive. As we receive, it never ends. It's an ongoing life that God has given to us, spending eternally, eternity with the Father forever. Oh, glory to Jesus. This is a timeless life. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19, life is beyond the natural. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. The word says, if in this life alone we have hope in Christ, then of all humans, we are most miserable and we are to be pitied. If our hope in Christ is only in this limited time between birth and death, then we are miserable because we have denied ourselves in Christ. There are so, so many things that does not give joy even in this planet. So if life only consists of this natural limited time of birth and death, and there is no more to it, nothing more to it, then we are most miserable. But glory be to God that the eternal life of God is, 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 is a continuum. It continues till eternity. It is not limited to the time of birth. It does, it's not limited to the time of death. It is continuous even when the body grows old and we drop the temple. The life of God continues. Hallelujah. We continue at the other side in the presence of the Father and we live forever with the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Now, we must understand what we call the assurance of salvation. How am I sure I'm saved? What is the confidence? What is the assurance that I am guaranteed some salvation? We know in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8, we realize that the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Now, I want to minister to you today. If you are out there listening to me, and you know sometimes religiously you came out on the nat in the normal routine of people coming out and then lift up their hands and then beginning to confess and repent and all that, and that's all you did. But there is no personal conviction. There is nothing in your spirit, no encounter, no genuine intimate relationship between you and Jesus. This offers you an opportunity. 
to be so sure to really convince yourself that Jesus now is in your heart that now you have the eternal life of God. If that is you I'm describing, please, whatever you do today, today is the day of salvation. There is a miracle that is about to occur in you today. God the Father has determined, predetermined that you are getting saved today, that you are cut off from eternal damnation, that the rot that is to come will not happen to you that you'll be saved, that you'll be part of those in his trade in eternity. Please, today is your chance. And I want you to assure yourself, because until the Spirit of God comes to reside on the inside of you, your salvation is not guaranteed. We have to have assurance that we are saved. And this is the way I want you to personally desire I want you to believe the word that Jesus is the only way to the Father. There are no other ways. You, in the former religion I belong to, we used to believe, we believe that Jesus is a prophet. But until you know and you see him as Lord and Savior, you cannot find salvation. Merely recognizing Jesus as a great man does not bring you salvation until you acknowledge and submit fully to him as Lord and Savior. And the fact that somebody is born into the religion of Christianity does not guarantee salvation. It is a personal experience. And all other miracles follow after this particular one. Salvation, genuine salvation is our portion. And I pray for you today. I am desiring that hearing this statement of mine tonight, we curse you to go personally to ask God to reveal himself to you and show you the way to salvation. Now that I made known to you that Jesus is the only way, a simple prayer, just saying to Jesus, please reveal yourself to me. I want to have an encounter. If truly you are the only way, I want to know you. This is what it is. You can do this all by yourself in the comfort of your home. You can pray this prayer all by yourself. You do not need any serious ritual. Invite Jesus into your heart. Invite him with an encounter. Ask him for a revelation of who he is to you. And I'm sure you are double dare you to do this. I guarantee you an answer if you dare to pray. Hallelujah. This should begin to happen in your life if truly salvation occurs. When you pray this prayer, you should begin to see these little signs coming forth in your life. Immediately that prayer is answered. Immediately Jesus steps into your life. Certain things change. Number one, there will be peace in your heart. Peace as you have never had before. We call it the peace of God that surpasses human understanding. It steps into your life. It is the evidence that something occurred which is supernatural. There will be peace that will step into your life from all those winds of adversity. You may be going through storms of life, but immediately this experience occurs in your life. There will be a stepping in of peace, the supernatural peace of God. It is one of the assurance of your salvation. The second thing that you begin to see happen is joy. There is what we call the joy of salvation. The joy of salvation that is full of glory. The kind of joy you could not express. There is no way to put words to explain why you are joyful. What is you are just super excited. You might still be going through the challenges and the lack and the difficulties, but there is an inner joy. There is that joy that is eternal joy. It makes you, you bubble with joy from the inside, a welling up kind of a joy that gives you inexpressible kind of feeling. That is the joy of your salvation. And that is one of the gifts that God gives to you that accompany your salvation. Hallelujah. 
it is a clear proof that eternal life now resides within you. Oh, glory to God. This miracle of salvation is the beginning of your walk with God, is a beginning of a new life, is the beginning of the real life, is the beginning of eternity. This is the beginning of your journey with God. I encourage you. Please don't miss it for anything. And in case you have been associated and affiliated to a church for many years, and this is not an evidence in your life, I challenge you. Let us take this very leap of faith together. Let's call upon God. I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray that those of you listening to me today, that God will give you an encounter that you will never forget. That today you will be convinced before you wake up tomorrow morning, an experience will occur that will make you know you have a part in eternity. Something will happen in your life that will display that truly you met with God and you are saved, genuinely saved, permanently saved. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We give you praise because this word went out, it shall not return void. I ask, oh God, in the name of Jesus, to everyone who is out there listening to the sound of my voice, you are the giver of eternal life. Jesus, your mission is to save people from all their sins. I pray tonight, whatever might be the sins brought before you, whatever, whoever there is out there calling upon you for an encounter, please, Lord, you said nobody comes to you by any means will you cast away. I ask tonight that deliberate encounter will occur in the life of that person. It's a very special encounter will take place today in the life of my hearers that will guarantee their salvation. Thank you for eternal life. We rejoice and we celebrate. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, that's it, my friends. I want you to rejoice. This is something we ought to rejoice about. I want you to be excited that you are one in the number. You are saved. God Almighty is your Father. Jesus saved you from sin. You are no longer the dead man walking. You are alive in him. And he lives right now on the inside of you. Oh, glory to God for eternal life. This is one of those things that we received of him. Hallelujah. Until I come your way tomorrow, may the Lord Almighty multiply the seed sown in your life and cause this to amount to harvest of wonders, to eternal life. Nobody hearing my voice today will be condemned in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Shalom, shalom. Hallelujah.